All right, guys, now we're on board. Much better. Boom. Okay. And we're gonna be on Instagram too in just a second. Carrie's gonna get you started here though. Boom. Welcome to Saturday at the Corner Boxing Hi. Club. Marissa, I hope you're here. Notice this shirt she made me right before. Nice. Water gloves, grab a dot. <laughs> I can't awesome. wait to say those words again to you guys. <laughs> so much. <laughs> so, here you go, we're getting this going. I'm going to start with some shoulder cam. So arms are out, not straight ahead. So you're straight ahead, then I'm going to open up my arms about 45 degrees, shrug up, pull back, depress, press four. Up, back, down, four. Up, back, and then I'm just going to start to roll it. Basically like a choo-choo train. What this does is just create a nice little air glide. Make sure you stay up tall, looking straight ahead, reverse the direction. So I shrug down, I pull my scaps together, so the bones on the back side, shrug up, press forward, down, back, up, forward. Again, circling it, getting that choo-choo motion going. Good, next. We got that neck, windmill toe touches, big arms, bend those knees, slide left to right. Big, big arms. Three, two, one. And next we're gonna do some good mornings. My hamstrings are tight this morning because I'm a bike ride. So little bit in the knees, chest out, shoulders back. I'm gonna push my hips back and bow, keeping a nice flat back. If this starts to happen or I feel the surrounding, I'm gonna stop. So depending on how tight your hamstrings are, you might only get to about here and have to come back up. If you're really flexible like that knee, you need to get all the way to here. On the way up, right here, I push my knees on the ground, I squeeze my butt, that brings me upright. Three, two, one. Good, next is chain breakers, hands straight out. Pull them narrow. So my elbows are close to my body, my fists are at my armpits. Then I'm gonna punch forward, swing my arms wide. Go back to fist out, pull narrow like I'm doing a seated row. Press out, then I swing my arms wide like I'm doing a reverse fly. Out. Narrow out wide. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. You can add a little hop. Good. Three, two, one. Next is going to be reverse lunge over and reach. So you're going to step backwards. Big reach over top. Big stretch, alternate sides. Five, four, three, two, one more. Good. Next, we go forward lunge with rotation. So you're going to step forward, arms are extended, rotate 90 degrees towards that leg you step with, then come back. And alternate sides. Keeping those arms extended so you get a bigger stretch of that upper back. Three, two, one. Good. Now you go through some of the drills we did the other day. So my feet are parallel. Make sure you can see my feet. Yep, you can. I'm going to turn on my right foot so you guys should be able to see the profile of my Adidas boxing shoes. My eyes stay forward and I come back. So I turn, my left elbow right now is pointing straight towards you, my right elbow is pointing back. I'm turning on the bottom of your feet. My belly button points that way and points the other way. My weight is equal on both feet. When I rotate to my left, my head is slightly over my left foot. When I rotate to my right, my head is over. So I'm not staying on the center line. I'm rotating off of that center line. 
Just slightly staying tall. Chin staying forward. So I'm warming up my neck, my rotation there. Okay, next, feet are still forward. I'm gonna throw my right fist, take my head off the center line to the left, so my head is over my left foot. And then I come back, rotate to my right, throw my left fist, my head's over my right foot. And then I just alternate sides, bringing my elbow to my body. So my elbows are now here. My elbow comes to my body, pinky to the corner of my mouth, like I'm holding a telephone. Okay, not sucking my thumb. Turn that fist over right at the very end. Three, two, one. Now we're gonna throw our uppercuts. Left uppercut, my head's off the line again. Right uppercut. So see my head's on the left side of the line, my head goes to the right side of the line. Boom. Keep staying tall. Still turn on the balls of my feet. One hand's always on my chin. Three, two, one. Now we're going to hooks. So my forearm is parallel to the ground. Okay? I'm pouring the cup of coffee. These are short hooks. A long hook, I start to hold the cup of coffee, but here I'm going to short. So I'm going to turn, bob my foot still, I stay forward, turning those shoulders. So you can't see what's on my shirt right now. It's not here. That's not enough rotation. I want to exaggerate that movement. Three, two, one. Next, we're gonna do our step. I'm gonna show you guys straight ahead. My fist at my face, pinkies in. I can tell my two phones. I'm gonna step forward on my right foot, throw my left fist, my right shoulder is back narrow. Okay, and then I come right back to where I was. Step forward again on my right, throw my left fist, turn my shoulders. So again, you can't see what's on my t-shirt. If you're standing over there, you'd be able to see it, but you're not. Three, Good, keeping your head straight ahead. Two, one. Now the other side. Step on my left foot forward. Throw my right, punch right down the line. Again, turn those shoulders. I'm tighter. Righties, you'll probably have a harder time throwing this right and turning. I'm a lot tighter with that type of rotation for me. All the more reason to do this. Three, take my head off that center line. Two, one. Okay, now we're gonna show you the profile. We're gonna go back and throw on our left fist. I'm gonna step forward my right foot, throw my left fist on the line. And then I'm gonna take a big step back and throw my right fist down the line. Step forward on my right, throw my left, step back on my right, throw my right. Staying tall. Focus you are in. totally messing this up. It's okay. Yeah, it's not. Keep going. It gets easier. Yep. It's like dancing. Nobody's watching. Nobody cares. We're all too busy dancing. Nobody can see you. Just move. What will help you is maybe record yourself and watch yourself do the drills and give your own self feedback. Or you can record yourself and send it to me and I'll give you some feedback. Three, two, I'm like, yeah, you got it. Or, mm, we are working on it a little bit. Okay? Now you're going to switch. So your right foot is gonna be your stationary foot. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, let me just move the left. Yeah, no, but not the left foot's a stationary. <laughs> See, teamwork. See, we even messed up. So now your left foot is your stationary foot. You're gonna step forward on your right, throw your left, step back on your right, throw your right. Boom. Step back on the right, throw the right. Step forward on the left, throw left. Maybe that is the same. I don't know. I don't know. Do you the opposite of whatever you just did. Do the opposite of whatever you did. Do the opposite of whatever you did. Good. It's only for us too. Big step forward. So it's not easy when you don't have the class. We oh. need your brains in here for this. Good. Big step, rotate again. See, you can see my shirt right now. 
So if you were standing in front of me, you wouldn't be able to see my shirt. Boom. Boom. Next, we're going to work on that walking one that's going to become a part of our warm up. So we're going to step forward on our right foot, throw our left fist, step forward on our left, throw our right so just opposite. Step, step. Now we're going to just reverse that, and I need to turn my shoulders more. Step back, rotate, step back, rotate. Three, four, four. One, two, three, four. Back, one, two, three, four. Let's go back a little more. One, two, three, four. 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 Two, three, one. One, two, three, two. One, two, three, three. One, two, three, four. Two, three, five. Two, three, six. One, two, seven. One, two, three, eight. Two, three, nine. Two, three, ten. Now we do that with our uppercut. Same action, not as many reps. Step forward on your left foot, throw, I'm sorry, your right foot, throw your left uppercut. Two, three, four. One, 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 two, three, four. So when I throw this left uppercut, I'm really thinking about pulling my right shoulder back. When I throw my right uppercut, I'm thinking about pulling this shoulder back to get that rotation. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now we're gonna go hooks. One hand should be at your chin. Okay, so I step forward on my left foot, throw my right, and I'm pulling back with my left shoulder when I throw that right hook. I step forward on my right foot, I throw my left hook. Three, four, then I'm gonna go backwards now. One, two, three, four, four. One, two, three, 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 four. Okay, these movements are called universal box. You're not in either stance. I mentioned on Thursday, this is more of a European style, Cuban style, or fundamental work that they do. We're starting to implement it here in the US. Traditionally, US boxers are known for low hips, lots of upper body movement, okay, real slick, we're described as, okay. Low hips give us stability. Stability gives us power, okay, hard shots. And we have really good upper body movement, meaning hips up, really good when I have low hips because I've got lots of options for you to change levels. Higher hips, or staying taller, like we do when we're in the universal boxer stance, it gives me, allows me mobility. I can move really well with my feet. Okay, footwork. It enhances footwork. So knowing what do I need against what opponent. If I have a really heavy foot, you know, opponent who's just looking to throw power shots, I may want to decide, hey, I don't want to exchange with this person. I'm going to stay a little bit taller, higher up, so I can move better against them. Because I don't want to sit there with them. If I have somebody who moves a lot, doesn't have a lot of power in their shots, maybe, you know, I might try to work more on walking them down and staying a little bit lower. And the moment they stop moving, they get tired, now I can start to dig my power shots, starting with the body to take away their legs. So knowing the difference between the two positions is really important. This is advanced, but starting to learn how to do these walking steps help you when you get in jams. Okay, this is, our athletes who've been boxing four or five years now are just now starting to implement this work, but pretend I'm on the ropes. You guys can see my feet right here. Okay, I'm on the ropes. So I have somebody here, I'm kind of jammed up. I'm letting my box 
Vinyasa stance, what I do, got a situation, what I can do is step off to my left. Boom. So this step or this step that we do, I can use it to get off the ropes and turn my opponent. So I can step to my left, boom, boom. Now they're on the ropes. Okay, I can step to my right, throw my right hook, and walk my way off of the ropes. So just so you know why you start to do that, don't think you're gonna do that. Anytime soon you need to get these movements down and be really confident with them. So next we're gonna go into is just our boxing stance, rolling our one, two, one, twos. So, orthodox boxer here, might look flipped in the mirror or the camera, but rolling, okay? So again, I'm turning, turning, turning. Pinkies are coming back to the corner of my mouth, so I'm holding that landline, okay? I, when I throw or roll my shots, I pick up my left hand when I throw my left hand, I pick up and turn when I throw my right hand. Okay, so that's my power hand. My one, my two. I'm merengue dancing. I'm picking up my feet and setting them down. That allows me to turn and pivot a little bit easier than if I just kept my feet on the ground. It's a little harder. Step with it. Okay, elbows coming back to my body. So just like I'm thinking about my hands coming to my chin, I'm thinking about my elbows coming to my body. Now I'm going to go row on four, five, four, fives, uppercuts. Again, especially when I throw that rear uppercut, I'm going to pull that left shoulder back. Exaggerating that movement right now on my warm up. One hand is always on my chin. I throw my right, I bring my left to my chin. I throw my left, I bring my right to my chin. My elbow is to my body, so it's not out here. It's here because I'm coming up and through. I can throw this to their body, or I can throw it up through to my opponent's chin. I'm turning my feet, turning my hips on both. Now I'm going to throw hooks. Okay. I know I don't teach really a rear hook because that comes natural for most people. They want to hook their back hand and then it becomes really hard for them to throw a straight shot. Keep turning those shoulders. I'm looking right now in the mirror, thinking about hiding what's on my shirt from you guys with the turns to make sure I'm exaggerating them. My form is parallel to the ground. I'm pouring the cup of coffee. A longer hook, if I want to throw a longer, I start to hold the cup of coffee. Hold it. Pour it. Short, hold, long. Next thing I do is alternating my up shot and my overshot with my lead hand, meaning my uppercut and my hook with my lead hand. I'm always going to throw my two. So I'm going to go two, five, two, three. Two, five, two, three. Two, five, two, three. Notice my head's coming off the center line. It travels to the right of the line. It travels to the left of the line. It's not stationary in the same spot, so I'm not an easy target if my opponent punches with me at the same time. Two, five, two, three. Five, two, three. Good. So right now, my rear hand is always my two, okay? I always alternate between an up shot and an over shot. Now we're gonna flip it a little bit. My lead hand is always going to be my straight shot or my one, and my alternate to my four, my uppercut with my rear hand, and my two, my straight shot with my rear hand. So one, four, one, two. One, four, one, two. One, four, one, two. Focusing on that shoulder rotation. Head still coming out the center line. I need to pull my left shoulder back more when I throw my right hand because I can still see that shirt. Good. Now, let's do something different. So my lead or my lead hand shot is always going to be the hook. Okay. Now I'm going to alternate. Instead of the jab, I'm going to throw the hook always with my lead hand. I'm going to alternate between my four and my 
two, okay? So it's gonna go hook, four, hook, two. Hook, four, hook, two. Hook, four, hook, two, okay? So again, how I can sequence things, I can pick same shot with the lead hand, two different shots with the other hand. They alternate between. Okay, so we got four, and then the two, and always a hook on the lead. So now we're gonna switch it. Let's always throw the uppercut with the lead hand, but I'm gonna alternate between the four and the two with the rear hand. So I'm gonna throw my five, four, five, two. Five, four, five, two. So again, my lead hand doesn't change. That punch stays exact same shot the whole time. Five, four, five, two. So that's staying the same. Good. Now, let's go back. Rear hand. I'm always going to throw my four. I'm going to alternate between a one and a five with my lead hand. So let's go one, four, five, four. One, four, five, four. One, four, five, four, four, five, four, one, four, four. And you'll notice that like, this one's a little bit tougher for me to throw a five, four. It's not really something or even a one, four. It's not something that I do very often. But it's a good way for now. I realize, hey, I have a hard time throwing my four off of my jabs. It's something I know I need to drill. I should be able to throw any punch in any sequence. Few more. One, four, five, four. One, four, five, four. Good. Now let's go between, let's always throw the two with the rear hand. And we're going to alternate between the one and the three. This is going to be the last one. Probably one of the most common, and it almost become a one, two, three, two. One, two, three, two is a common punch series, or one, two, threes are a common punch series. So, one, two, three, two. So I'm alternating between the jab and the hook with the lead hand, but I'm always throwing my two with the rear hand, my power hand. So one, two, three, two. One, hook with the lead hand, and always the two with the rear hand. Now, if you get really fancy with this, and really challenge yourselves and your rhythm, and I can give myself and my, my lead hand three different shots, and we're just gonna do a little bit. So I'm gonna go one, three, five with my lead hand, but I'm always going to throw my two with the rear hand. So one, two, three, two, five, two. One, two, three, two, five, two. One, two, three, two, five, two. So now I have to remember to sequence three different shots, which is a lot tougher. Okay, now, instead of the two with the rear hand, I'm going to throw my four. I know for myself that's probably going to be a tougher sequence for me to do. So I'm always going to throw one, three, five will be my sequence for my lead. My four is always coming with my rear hand. So one, four, three, four, five, four. One, four, three, four, five, four. One, four, four, five, four. One, four, three, Five, four, one. When I throw that forward for the three, I have to make sure I turn those shoulders so I can get that hook around my opponent's guard. If I don't turn, I'm not gonna get that hook around, or it's not gonna be a very powerful shot. One, four, three, four, five, four. One, four, three, four. Make sure your hands are still going back to your face. So there's how you can see how you can start to build things. All fundamental work. 
jot down. You know, the basics would be same punch with the lead hand, same punch with the rear hand and alternating between the two. And then if you want to advance it, you go two different punches with maybe your lead hand, same punch with the rear hand, and you can build on that. You can add on slips as part of your sequence. I can always slip when I go to my left, throw my two, oh, I'm sorry, throw my jab, slip to my left, come back. Well, I have to work on that one. Let me figure out how to add on the slips to that sequence. I put that off the top of my head, but there's a way to do that. I can think about it. So, okay, always slip into my left, come back with my left hand. Slip to my left, come back with my left hand. So I might alternate. Slip left, throw my three. Slip left, throw my five. Slip left, throw my three. Slip left, throw my five. Just like if I slip, I could add in slip into my right, coming back with my right hand. Slip to the right, throw my two. Slip to the right, throw my four. Go back and forth between that. And if you want so, some extra practice on that, you can watch my class from yesterday. There you go. Just say. Okay, so next, we're going to go into some fundamental footwork with the jab. Okay? Eventually, let's we'll start with first the footwork. Can you see my feet right here? I think I've got my, my markers right here. So, what we're going to start with, and I'm going to turn Instagram just a little bit. You can see that line a little bit better. So I have my right foot on the right side of the line, left foot on the left side of the line. Whatever direction we go, we're gonna just step with that foot. So if I say forward, I'm gonna step with my front foot forward and then recover right back to where it was. So forward, if I wanna go to my left, my left foot is gonna step to the left and come back. If I say back, I'm gonna step with our back foot, transfer away to the back foot and come back. Right, I'm gonna step to the right, come back, okay? There are basically little rock steps or ways that I can displace my head or shift weight when I don't really want to move that much with my opponent. I just want to set them up. So forward, left, back, right, keeping my hands up. So forward, I can turn my shoulders this way or forward, I can turn my shoulders the other way. It's a little more advanced. Forward, try both. Forward again, Forward, forward. So this forward would be jabbing, taking my head to the right. This forward step, pulling my right shoulder back, would be doing an up jab, and I take my head to the left. It's a little slick move. If you guys watch Diego, as a lefty, he loves to do that move to people. So does Percasso. So forward, left, now you gotta jab, yeah. Back, right, back. Forward, take that step and recover right to your stance. So make sure you're not bringing your feet all the way together when you recover. Forward, back, left. So this is a good drill. You know, whenever we're doing the direction drill, forward, back, left, right, one, two, three, four, if you don't have a lot of space, you can just do this piece, okay? Forward, back, right, back, left, forward, Back, forward, back, left, left, right, forward. Okay, now we're gonna do it with the jab. So as I step that direction, my punch should be landing, and I come back and my hand recovers. My hand should be on my chin, the moment my foot recovers to where it should be, back to my basic stance. So, Forward, here, and recover. So I'm going to show you the profile on that one. Forward, boom, coming back. Right to where my foot was. Forward, same when I go back. And I want to make sure I don't do this when I go back. Because I'm trying to displace my head. I'm taking my opponent is coming to me, and I want to make them miss. So again, throw the jab as I take those steps. Start with small steps in the beginning. So forward, forward. See, I changed my head position on that one. Forward, forward, forward. You can play with it. Forward, forward, okay? Back, back, right, right, back, left, left. Left is a tough one to throw the jab. Like, unless your opponent's moving, then you would do this straight ahead. But if I'm team, my opponent's staying right there when I go to the left. I'm going to try that little up jab move at the same time. Left, 
This time my opponent is sliding to the left, so I'm trying to cut him up. Left. Okay. Up jab, they don't move. Left. Regular jab, they're sliding down the ropes. Jab. Good. One. Or four. Four. Back. Four. Back. Right. Right. Okay, now we're gonna do that same thing, but we're gonna throw our two instead. So I'm gonna step that direction and throw my two. Boom. Boom. So the, moving to our, our two hand and throwing our two is similar to then moving to our lead hand and throw our moving towards, well, for me, my left is a righty. Throw my left. I'm gonna turn my body a little bit on the shot. Okay? Boom. Ready? One or four. Forward, back, back, right, right, left, left, back. Make sure you turn your shoulders back and taking your head with you. It's not this. Taking my head with me. Back, back, forward, head off the center line when I move forward. Am I going to throw the shot? Take my head right to my opponent. Head off the center line. They're throwing theirs for two righties. They're throwing their right hand. Boom, I throw my right hand. I let their right hand travel over my shoulder. I put this down the middle. Or with the lefty, this is the move we use with lefties. They throw their jab. Boom. I step up. Forward. Back. Remember, turn your hips. Back. Right. Left. Left, turn your hips. Left, right, forward, back. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the jab on the step. When we recover, we're gonna throw our two. So I'm gonna say forward, you're gonna step forward, throw your jab. Recover, as you recover, you throw your two. Especially when we're moving forward, I'm like baiting my opponent. Percasso does this, he's tall, Eric does this. Bait them, they think they're in reach, and then you step back, they fall short with their counter shot, and you catch them on the end of your reach. Works really well if you're tall and lanky. Or if you're just a little bit shorter, you need to get your opponent to come to you a little bit. Okay, so forward, throw the jab to get there. Recover, throw your two at the same time. I'm not recovering and then throwing my two, because I use that jab to hide that two coming. So forward. Jab there, two on the recovery. Four, jab there, two on the recovery. Now we're gonna go backwards, okay? Back, jab, two. Jab, two. Okay, back, two on the recovery. This gives you a lot of power because I'm stepping back in and typically they're gonna be moving in on that shot. Back, good. Now we're going to our right, 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 as I step back, I'm gonna turn my hips. Right, okay, left, 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 forward, forward, back, back, right, right, Back, back, left, left, forward. Oh, I messed up on that one. Forward, forward, right, right, back, right, left, left. Forward. Good. Now from that, again, I could add on more pieces. I could say recover and then add on your hook. So it could be forward, come back, two, three. You can sequence that. You can add on your own pieces to all of these sequences. Okay, you learn that first step. Grab a quick sip of water because I need a sip of water because I'm talking too much. And let us know you're here. So give us something in the comments. You shouldn't be too far away from your device. Who is here?
Y'all know better me. So now, to finish up, we're gonna do some of those uh, dot or cone drills that we had earlier. I'm just gonna get a little timer going. Nicole loves cone drills. Those are her favorite. Uh, yes, good. Square a little bit smaller this time for her. Jeez Because even mine is a little bit big. <laughs> I haven't busted out this drill probably in over a decade. So it's been a while since I set it up. Now I remember more of it. So again, if you have some cones or some little things or even paper plates, you could use paper plates. I want to just real plates, paper plates, set them up on the ground. You can even cut the paper plates and make them a little bit smaller. Home and craft. Agility training work. Okay. Oh man. And Felix and Brandon and Karina are all with us today. So. Oh yeah. And Felix has a very small square in the whole facility he's in right now. So uh, let's play a little. So we got that. So let's start first. We're gonna go 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. We're just gonna do the in, in, out, out. Right foot's gonna lean. So in, in, out, out. Keeping it really, really simple. Go in about five seconds. 30 seconds work. Three, two, go. Right, left, right, left. In and out. Keeping that nice pace. Swing your arms. I don't know how to your hands up, but for agility, I like you guys to use your arms. Halfway through, 15 more seconds. Keep swinging your arms. Nice, steady pace. Three, two, good time. The next one, we're gonna go left foot leads. In, in, out, out. Fix your cones if you need to, like me. So left foot goes in first, right foot follows. Left out, right out. In, in, out, out. Don't complicate it, you're just alternating steps. About five seconds, deep breath. Three, two, go. In, in, out, out. Left, right, left, right. Swinging those arms. Over halfway. Almost 10 seconds. Keep going, keep going. 10 seconds, not even. About five seconds. Keep swinging those arms, three, two, good time. Next we do pendulum. Make sure both feet travel in. I'm gonna show you the profile since I have the white line. I'm gonna start outside and then I'm gonna step me on or into the center of my square, okay? So in and out. Make sure both feet travel. You should be Charlie Browning. Go from foot to foot. Three, two, go. Full feet. So in and out. Full feet travel. Keeping your hands up. Notice when I do that, I kind of draw my hands up higher because I'm not punching. I probably never step them like this with my opponent. But I certainly don't want to do this and drop my hands as I move it in. The next one, we're going to do icky shuffle. So in, in, one foot goes out. In, in, out. One, two, three. One, two, three. Two, three. I'm make sure you guys can still see my feet. You guys are still looking at what he's watching right now. It's a lot of pressure not to mess this up. Oh, I just accept it. I'm not as good as I used to be, but I'm going to get better. This actually motivated me to start doing this more. I don't One, know two, three. Two, three. Two, three. Two, three. Two, three. <laughs> in and out, in and out. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Keep it up. Five seconds. Good. 
Good time. Next, we're going to do the Barry Sanders Shuffle. The great Barry Sanders. If you're too young to know that, you missed out. So both feet are outside. Your outside foot steps across your body, center. Then you go up, up. So two feet out, one foot in, out, out. Outside foot in, out, out. Right in, out, out. Left in, out, out. One, two, three, two, three. Turning your hips. I bring that foot in front of my body. My shoulders stay square towards you. And I turn my hips to get around. 10 seconds. Start to pick up that pace a little bit. Good. Next, same Barry Sanders shuffle, but instead of going in front, we're going to go behind. So that outside foot's going to step behind, out, out. Behind, out, out. It's more of a soccer move here. So let's just keep going before we go slow. Behind, out, out. Behind, out, out. I turn my hips away, out, out. Behind, out, out. Behind, out, out. One, two, three. One, two, three. This is really just training for my line dates that I had to keep in shape for because I haven't been able to go out dancing and I missed that. Five more seconds. Three, two, time. Good. Let's do. I hope you guys are messing that up as bad as I was just to make me feel better. Good. Now let's just go through real short. Um, some of our hip series that we do as part of our warm up, which is actually a little bit of abs, a little bit of shoulder stability work. So we're going to go down to our push up position. We're going to do our upper downward abs. Okay, opposite hand, opposite toe. So three, two, downward dog, right hand, come up, boom, come up. Some of you guys like to do the reach through like this. When you go through, you can add that on. It makes it a little tougher. Does anybody else forget to breathe when they do this drill? I thought that hold my breath. I think I was. I'm one of those like yoga students that needs to have the coach tackle me to breathe. Now you go foot up into the outside of the hand. So right foot up, back knee is straight, front shin is perpendicular to the ground, hand to the ceiling. Elbow to arch. And I'm actually getting better at that. Slip sides. Back leg straight. Hand, elbow to arch. Reach, elbow to arch. Good. Reach, elbow to arch. We're going to do another 30 seconds. Reach, elbow to arch. Reach, elbow to arch. Reach. Elbow to arch, three more, reach, really get that elbow to the arch, one more side, reach, elbow to that arch, back knee straight, elbow to the arch. Now we're going to go foot up and across, so right foot goes towards my left hand, so I'm trying to get that foot near my hand, let's get back, make sure you guys can see that, just like that, and down. Then switching sides. Boom. Everybody's favorite, we guys are going down. It's been like five minutes. I'm gonna remind you now, switch sides, don't hang out there. Core Power has their own video streaming. You're not on that one right now. Good, next is gonna be rotation reaches. Feet shoulder width, right arm up, left leg through. Left arm up, right leg through. You can do a little modify where I kind of come over more and I bring my elbow towards my hip. So I almost come all the way over to the tabletop. Five, four, three, 
two, one. Okay, there you guys go. Hope that was a bit of a fundamental work today. If you are have a heavy bag at home, jump on that heavy bag now for five rounds. Five rounds of one on the heavy bag, at least. Okay, have one of the rounds where you focus on slipping after your punch. Have a round where you focus on exiting on the angle after you punch. Have a round where you start everything with a feint. Have a round where you finish everything with a double jab. Have a round where you focus on body shots. So I gave you five rounds to be able to think about. And if you don't have a heavy bag, shadow box those rounds. Don't yeah. take it off just because you don't have the ha, ha. Nice try. And if you have a band, use your band while you're shadow boxing. You guys missed Thursday. Oh, you gotta see this. This is like a whole different level of torture. Yeah. Which most of you probably have bands at home of some kind, and if you not don't, there's still some available online. You just have to look. You can even use TheraBand. You can get rolls of TheraBand. We're gonna be having these in classes now. We're gonna start doing this drill. So the band goes underneath your lead foot. Hands come here. I can move and everything. Punch. Punch, I'm still turning on my two. She's making it look easier than it is. That's why I only did four punches. <laughs> I know the tricks. So, great job. Let us know if you're working out. The schedule, Monday, Wednesday, Friday at noon with Bree. Monday, Wednesday is 5.15 p.m. with me. Full worker jump rope. So you can get a jump, go on a jump rope, jump in. And then Tuesdays and Thursdays at noon with me, right here. So you have a noon class Monday through Friday, you have an evening class Monday and Wednesdays, and you have Saturday mornings. So nice job, guys. Miss you guys. Good work. Enjoy your weekend.